is send her back the new locker up. Old faces might be a new problem. Who's on first? The Dim Debate lineup. I'm Jamal Simmons. This is why you should care. In 2016, people chanted build the wall and lock her up as the chorus lines at Donald Trump's political rallies. Wednesday night in North Carolina, President Trump found a new political foil to help rile up the crowds. The president went on an extended attack against Congresswoman Ilhan Omar of Minnesota that culminated in a new chant we might be hearing more and more on the campaign trail. Donald Trump has wrapped his arm around racial, identity, and anti-immigrant themes that would have made most recent Republican presidents pause, but his most faithful supporters seem to love it. The issues raised by the president aren't just political. They cut right to the cultural construct of American society. Trump is willing to attack judges, political opponents, and even gold star parents based on their religion or country of origin. Voters have to wrestle with important questions. Who is American? Who gets to participate in our national life? The president is not the first person to raise these questions, but this is the most vivid moment in recent history for Americans to answer them. The president said today that he wasn't happy with the chant after all, and he'll stop it if it happens again. We'll see. In the meantime, it's up to each of us to answer why we should care. Not quite a week ago, strange pictures started popping up in my social media timeline. Friends who I knew to be in their 20s, 30s, or 40s suddenly had heads full of gray hair, wrinkles, and jowls. This new face app had mounted a takeover. Users put in pictures and magic. Artificial intelligence changed their faces to see what they might look like as old people. But then the backlash came. Apparently, FaceApp is Russian-owned, and users must give it permission to access all the photos on their mobile devices to generate these funny images. 100 million people downloaded the app. But did they read the fine print? That clearly states FaceApp has perpetual, irrevocable, and non-exclusive right to use their photos. For the record, the app's developers are based in St. Petersburg. They claim no affiliation with the Russian government and deny sharing data with third parties. But regulators and U.S. lawmakers are sounding alarms anyway, warning users their information could end up in the hands of the Russian government. Senator Chuck Schumer called for the FBI and the Federal Trade Commission to investigate the popular app. The Democratic National Committee also issued warnings to the 2020 presidential campaigns and advised them to delete the app from their phones. Now here's why you should care. Seeing what you might look like as grandpa or grandma might be funny. But is it worth giving up all your photos and data to a company that could be used by a foreign adversary intent on disrupting American democracy? We've learned from Facebook's Cambridge Analytica problems that users' information is fair game and that information is being exploited for undisclosed reasons. You might want to think twice about using FaceApp. And I don't know why anybody would want to do this anyway. Old age is coming fast enough. No need to rush it. Tonight, the Democratic National Committee and CNN pick the lineups for the second set of debates between presidential hopefuls that are gonna meet this month in Detroit. How will the candidates be split up among the two nights? The group of 20 is the same, except for one change. California Congressman Eric Swalwell dropped out and so Montana Governor Steve Bullock, he gets in. Some candidates who didn't make the cut came close, like former Alaska Senator Mike Gravel. He garnered the necessary number of donors to qualify for the debate, but Bullock's public polling edged him out. Now here's why you should care. We're getting into the choppy seas of the Democratic primary. After the first set of debates, there's been some movement in the polls. Former Vice President Joe Biden slipped down a few points, and Senator Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren, they've edged up. The candidates have been split into three tiers by the hosts. In the top tier, you got Biden, Harris, Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren. In the middle tier, that's Buttigieg, Booker, Klobuchar, O'Rourke, Castro, and Andrew Yang. And the bottom tier is Bennett, Bullock, de Blasio, Delaney, Gabbard, Gillibrand, Hickenlooper, Inslee, Ryan, and Williamson. It's a lot of these people. The lineups will be a mix from each of those tiers, and the lineup matters. If Kamala Harris and Joe Biden had not been selected for the same night, she never would have been able to have the chance to directly confront the former vice president about his record on busing and working with segregationist senators. That was a key part of the first debates. Now, nobody knows who the Democratic nominee will be, but we're starting to see signs of who the real players are. Anything can shake this race up, and on debate night, anything could happen. 
All right, that does it for today's show. What you think? You can let us know in the comment section or join the conversation on social media using the hashtag WISC. You can also catch more of this show and other great content from Hill TV by subscribing to the Hill's YouTube channel. Be sure to click the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. And you can find me on Twitter at Jamal Simmons or at Real Jamal Simmons on Facebook and Instagram. That's why you should care. Catch you next time.